I went out last night and got in a fight. There you go, I'm not proud of it, and if there's young people watching, don't do it, right? Don't do it, don't go getting in fights. But basically, right, I was a few mates, Keanu was there, Keanu Reeves, right? He can take a joke. If you say to Keanu, right, here, Keanu. <laughs> what? You know, nothing, just Keanu. <laughs> You know, every time you say his name, you laugh because it's a stupid name, right? But that other guy, that big guy, like Denzel Washington, whatever you do, don't go up to him and go, Hurry, Denzel. <laughs> he gave me a right. He gets, fortunately, Al Pacino was there and he jumped in the middle going, All right, leave it. We both had a drink. Leave it. Uh, it was all right. Save the day. Uh, oh, I'll tell you what I've got, right? It's fantastic things. Wonderful quality products you can buy in the shops. Uh, look at this. Because uh, you know Fergie, right? She comes around my house sometimes and I'll make her my, a, a lemon pie. And she'll say, oh, this is quite nice, but it's not what I'm used to, right? So what I do, so she doesn't feel bad that she's a commoner again now, I'll make her that, look at that, royal lemon pie. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It makes her feel that some of us still remember. And uh, I got this, right? It's, it's beautiful. It's a toffee thing. It's like a uh, whole milk toffee yogurt with a separate portion of chocolate fl flavoured sugar strain. And this is particularly for when... Uh, for when Vanessa Feltz comes around my house, look. That's, uh, look, that's a monster treat. <laughs> what have I got here? Oh, yeah, look at this. These are a couple of things that I use. Look, this, is, uh, this is styling gel for my hair. You put that, you can probably tell that I'm using it right now. Wet look, styling gel. Makes your hair look fantastic. Sometimes Welsh people come around my house, right, and they say, oh, can I have some as well, but I just give them that, look. Quick gel. <laughs> I don't know about orange colour. It's, uh, it's orange flavoured as well, so if they get a bit hungry, they can suck their hair. <laughs> Probably the closest thing Welsh people get to a meal most days. <laughs> and this other stuff that I've got, right? This is, uh, say you've got a fish, right, and you want to take your fish on holiday, but you don't know what to feed it because you don't have the food in continental hotels is going to be what it's used to. Just take that, look. Vacation fish food. <laughs> right? But that's for a fortnight, but if you're only going for a couple of days Saturday and Sunday, take that. Weekend. They think of everything. It's absolutely fantastic. Discovered an amazing thing that my microwave can do. Oh, seriously, if you ever get, if you ever win the national lottery, pick out like a couple of million quid, buy one, right? You won't get any change, but get one, right? This can do. It's fantastic. That's what you do, right? Get a picture of this, right? That's Damon Hill. Damon Hill, and that's the other one. I don't know who that is. It's Coulthard or whoever. But these are big Formula One champions, right? Picture of them. That goes in there, right? A magazine about electrical equipment, let me just show you that. There's a magazine about electrical equipment, right, and all the different brands of electrical equipment. That goes in there, right? And then this, the final thing that goes in is this, look. Can you see that? Oops. It's something we all love. It's a little screw, you see? <laughs> and that goes in there. So you've got Damon Hill and David Coulthard have gone in there. A magazine with all the brands of electrical uh, products and a screw. Put that in there. We'll wait a bit longer for this one because it's worth it. <laughs> Bing! And you put it all together and it's thought they've all come together and you look at it, a Phillips screwdriver. Look at that. <laughs> That's absolutely fantastic. That's technology gone mad, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, what we got here? Oh, yeah, look, it's me. They're bringing this back. They've asked me anyway for bringing it back. David Cassidy's are up for it. Shirley Jones is around. Uh, and as long as I can do it as well, they said they'll remake. It's me when I was in the Partridge family. Oh, um, no, no. <laughs> Little one out of the Partridge family. And this is a fantastic book. You know, only fools and horses, right? Well, that's finished. I ain't going to do that anymore. But one of the characters, right, they've got him, right, and they've done a series of books about him where he goes off and he travels all around France, Switzerland, Belgium, Germany, and all the adventures he has just walking around like... Like that, being stupid in all the places in the common market. Let's put there, look. Trigger in Europe. Okay, <laughs> anyway, I'll tell you what, you're very, very lucky to find me in, because normally this time of night, obviously, I'd be uh, out and about. This is my cousin Dan and, his, and my uncle Charlie, right? He's dead. Uh, I'll knock him out with him sometimes. A bit down on their luck, both of them, but it's nice to see him. Right, Dan. You'll be turned into an homeless place. Are they homeless? I'm homeless. I could tell it into an homeless place, couldn't yes, I? Yes, well, you talk about it. Right. <laughs> this, is, this is my favourite bit. This is where he's on the phone from Switzerland talking to Boise. <laughs> Trigger in Europe. <laughs>
There's a, there's a program that I made uh, many, many, not that long ago, actually. Before the Channel Tunnel opened, before it became operative, uh, as it were, uh, we came up with a fantastic idea that we would get a load of people together and we would walk through it, raise money for charity. Always, anything to do with charity, I'm always uh, thinking about it. Um, <laughs> so we came up with this program and it's, uh, it's exactly what it is. It's called Le Walk. Le Walk, which is French for the walk. Uh, and we, and we, we stuck it out on the air. Uh, very good uh, program. We'll see a little bit of it now. Let's have a little look. Oh, uh, before we start, right, because uh, I like the idea of her being frozen with that look on her face. Uh, one of the amazing things that came out of this, these were just ordinary people, but the most part ordinary people. But there was one bloke, right, I think he was a plumber from, uh, from Rob Rive or something. But he, he did this little silly grin. Uh, and we were so impressed, we thought, we've got to get that bloke a job in television, because it was such a brilliant... Silly grid. And in the end, we gave him a part in one of uh, LWC's leading uh, Sunday night drama programs. But anyway, on with, on with this. Around me here are the 118 walkers. Everybody volunteered for the challenge. It's not that this The most important thing here is that they're going to raise lots and lots of money for charity. It's organised by the Children's Society, and a lot of money raised will go to them. What makes this... Right, here we come now. We've come to the star of the show now. Here's the Blessed Anthea, uh, and I'll tell you what, right, there's so many things that you didn't know. You had no idea, right? You couldn't have possibly imagined it to be true until Anthea tells you. But even more remarkable is that never before in the history of the world has a large group of people walked between France and England underneath the channel. <laughs> really? <laughs> Oh my God, we thought this kind of thing had been going on for years. <laughs> you mean every, that, that ch cross channel, what, they swim? We thought they just put their flippers on and walked underneath. How far is it anyway, Anthea? It's 31 miles. It's going to be a very hard, long slog. But with the rest of luck, we will be with you in 12 hours' time. Yeah, whose luck would that be, though? <laughs> that's, what's, that's what's kind of worrying me. Well, of course, this is a one-off opportunity to walk through the tunnel because once the trains start going through, there is going to be no way, even if you have the deepest desire in the world to walk, that you're going to be allowed to walk from France to Britain or Britain to France. <laughs> Until, of course, that moment came when they heard the sound... <laughs> can you smell but I can smell burning. I think we better walk this one. <laughs> right, let's have a let's have another look at uh, Anthea. We got Anthea again. Well we're not gonna start this race just yet because I'd like to introduce you to three Daily Mail prize winners. They have a very important job to do. Louise, Adam and Emily, and this is the job. Very, very shortly, let me tell you, these three kids are gonna be thinking, God, I wish she hadn't named us on television. <laughs> Now, why have you decided to join these mad people? In the name of Blue Peter, quite frankly. And when are we going to see the film? Uh, Monday, five past five. And all I can say is I hope it's a lot warmer inside this tunnel than it is outside. Oh, believe me, sweetheart. <laughs> Even if you speak French lorry drivers are making plans to arrange it to be much warmer inside the tunnel. <laughs> have no worries about that. Are you ready to walk? Yeah! There's just a bit coming up now where Anthea has to do something quite difficult, all right? And she said, well, I can probably cope for the first two, but then you better have some cue cards that I can refer to. Otherwise, I, I might forget what order they come in. I should have warned you before, be careful now if you don't like big noises or bangs on because that girl's going to press this thing and the, the, the biggest firework display you're ever going to see is about to... Right. Yes! Up it goes into the sky! Yes! Love it. Yes, come on, everybody. Nothing at all. <laughs> and also, this is a lovely bit of uh, the, the director of the whole thing uh, makes a little comment, which if you listen, you can hear. Just uh, he's made a decision basically about what they're going to do. <laughs> we 
I'll get the rockets then. <laughs> yes, we won't bother with the rockets. I never thought they were a good idea anyway. So there they go, off on their long trek to Britain. There they are, look, they're all smiling now, but will they be smiling at the end, 31 miles later? This is the first mass crossing by foot from France to Britain since the end of the last ice age, which was around 15,000 years ago. Look, there they all go into the tunnel. And even then, 15,000 years ago, people never walked under the sea, they walked on top of it. <laughs> Well, they were stupid, weren't they, those Ice Age people, walking on top of it in the ice. Why didn't they think ahead and dig a tunnel underneath the ice? Then they could have had a programme to open it up and you could have presented it, Anthea. <laughs> Wonderful little thing now from Anthea just at the end, just uh, when she no longer is, is kind of on camera. This time, for the first ever moment, they're underneath the channel and there's lots of luck to them all. I suspect it's nowhere near as annoying as the buzzing we've got in our area. Now, please, we must clock up some miles. Yes, it's a tremendous event. I thoroughly enjoy myself. I have cheated, however. I've discarded my boots in favour of a nice pair of uh, comfortable walking shoes. Oh, uh, this is Anthea doing what she does better. She's talking to ordinary people, talking to policemen. Because she does, she talks, she listens. She's not the kind of person who would suddenly get bored and just cut them off mid-conversation. <laughs> No first class, but we're having a, having a grand uh, day. It's lots of interesting All right, talk. carry on. I'll leave you next people. Here's Mike Smith now. Um, <laughs> picking what I can only say is a rather splendid mustard-coloured cable knit. <laughs> Mike's uh, got a specific task here that he's been given. Mike, find celebrities. If you see any celebrities, any celebrities at all, no matter how big or small, grab them and chat with them. There he goes, there's Nigel now. Mike, Mike, yeah, any other celebrities you see, grab them. Any celebrities at all? Hello, I'm, I'm Nigel Dempster from the... Uh, hello? I, I am... Hello? Hello? I, I would be very willing... No. Excuse me, and again, I would never, ever cast dispersions on possibly one of the most talented professionals in this business, but I can't lip-read. Does Anthea start off this whole conversation with the words, I'm shagged? <laughs> Anthea! That's worth one more look. Don't, don't prejudge the woman. Where's the school? Yeah, just down the road. What do you show you? What, by the old baths? Yeah. <laughs> are they still open, them baths? Yeah. Oh, no bollocks, they are still open. They are. Come on. Oh, I can't yeah. believe it. Just go and have a look. Oh, <laughs> them baths closed years ago. No. Come on. No, I don't think you talk complete bollocks, I just think you're talking bollocks at the moment about the bollocks. <laughs> All right. They turn their mouths, aren't they? Yeah, nice. How much do you reckon they're going for? What are they? All flat? All flat? No. How much? Oh, I better not tell him. Emma, they went to the Kurds. <laughs> they all went to the Kurds. Down the bottom as well. They went to the Kurds, man. <laughs> told you, I told you. 
<laughs> anyway, this is another program that I made. It went out with the police again. This one's slightly different, because this is uh, a town where they have two problems. Not only the problems of the streets, but the problems of the waterways as well. It's down in Hendley, uh, which, of course, you'll know. Uh, has, has, has anyone got a rowing calendar? Have you, got a, have you had your new rowing calendar this year? Well, I've got my rowing calendar, and uh, Henley's pretty much the, the most important thing on it. Henley Royal Regatta, the social event in the rowing calendar. Today, the small Oxfordshire town has to cope with more than 200,000 visitors who flood in over the five-day event. Now, the question is, really, for, for me, Henley... Do you know what I mean? You think, uh, you think Moss Side, you think the Gorbals, you think Brixton, you think some of the harder places in, in Handsworth. And, but how hard can it be being a copper in Henley? Well, apparently very, very hard indeed. Patrolling the river is a Thames Valley Police diving unit. We have two people jumping off the bridge, unfortunately. That is uh, illegal and very dangerous, uh, especially if they've been drinking. One jumped off the bridge uh, recently and, and hit one of the stanchions before it hit the water. So as well as being drunk, he was quite badly hurt. Uh, we pulled him out. So that's what they do. They're at the cutting edge. Don't think just because they don't make the front pages of the nationals, all right, that they're not really involved in fighting crime and dealing with death and devastation all around them. One of the toughest jobs in the world, a cop in Henley. <laughs> <laughs> Well, here, look at this, for starters. <laughs> look, he's gone completely, only his hat remained. I'll have to dive down, try and save him. Thankfully, all that needed to be fished out today was a hat. Yeah, OK, but the job must get more difficult than that. A gaggle of geese has drifted onto the racing course and needs to be given a police escort. <laughs> Sounds like a job for Goose Squad. <laughs> and, 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 and one of the major problems they have is ex-members of the royal family having uh, two or three pims too many and making complete arses of themselves on the river. <laughs> All right, back in town. Maybe the problems are a bit more difficult back in town, I don't know. Except what they seem to have found here is a man who thinks he's gone to Hampton Court Maze by mistake. In town during the day, the biggest headache for officers is to keep pedestrians and cars apart. Oh, this no. man doesn't seem to know where he's going. <laughs> Evening approaches and the traffic is brought to a standstill as a one-way system is dismantled. It's a tricky job. Sergeant Jerry Headley is responsible for changing the traffic lights. One wrong move and they could all turn to green. You see? You see? NYPD Blue, I don't think so, ladies and gentlemen. If that man presses the wrong button, huh, well, some cars could go the wrong way. And uh, he'd turn into uh, Mike Smith. <laughs> I believe now the problem that they have also is Peter Bowles as the bounder. <laughs> I think the biggest challenge which faces uh, the police here is really the safety of the enormous number of people who come to Henley. Uh, that and the fact that Richard Rodney Ponsonby Smythe sometimes takes it upon himself to direct traffic. As the day progresses, okay. the kind of problems oh, we, we face super. changes, because people are here, Absolutely super. Uh, enjoying okay. themselves. <laughs> this man was arrested in town for throwing beer over someone else. Oh, you thug. You're a thug. You're an animal. That's what you are. I'm not a bad boy. I say, officer, you're not going to tell Nanny, are you? Otherwise, there'll be no Ovaltine and Bath Oliver's tonight. And even, look, even when they nicked them, what do you think they do with them? Look. I was so annoyed. I wasn't going to do anything. I just threw half a time to One thing at a time, we'll sort it out, okay? You're going down, he was mate. cautioned for being drunk and disorderly. This is just a purely a holding area, see. You're going to the mobile library. Reading police station and they can be properly doing their rights. 
Finish! No! So, <laughs> I'd rather you walk than uh, get an ambulance, all right? Sorry. All right, lads. <laughs> ah, ah, this is it. This is what we like. Whenever you see this shot, you know, there's going to be some real police camera action, all right? Uh, they're heading off into the darkness of the night. Who knows what they're going to face? A mad killer on the loose. Could be anything. They're coming up now on the left-hand side. The officers are called to a pub outside town where a man has been seen without any trousers. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Sounds like a job for the bare bum squad. <laughs> it's a pathetic little place, isn't it? Ah, well, no, no, come on. Sometimes they do have some real crime, just like they have in the big cities. They're all rushing there, something's amiss. Two men are found urinating in an alleyway. They're annoyed at being told to move on and end up being arrested. <laughs> You're next, son! No one pisses on our walls! <laughs> and, of course, they do have the same problems as everywhere else. Me, when I've had a skin fall. <laughs> 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 Why is he having such trouble balancing, right? What's, what's the problem here? Yeah, right. Take your arms out of your jacket. How you play? <laughs> oh, I wondered what it was. <laughs> I'm sort of cut up. Do you mind, officer? I... Okay, I'm fine now. Thank you ever so much. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, fine. I think I'll jog home actually. <laughs> Lovely. Would you, could you would you mind awfully helping me with Lovely. Oh, that's awfully kind of you. Well, well where's your my butler one? Thank you. Here we go. You just you just go on your way, officer. I'll be fine here. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, bye. Okay. Here we go. What do you think? <laughs> Right, I'll tell you what, I'd love to hang about and show you the rest of that. Maybe I'll do that another time. Uh, I've, got, I've got to... Uh, whoop, uh, uh, I've got to go. I'll be fine, thank you very much, officer. <laughs> See you later. Cheers. Bob Mills will be back again tomorrow in Britcom as he's still in bed with Medina. So please, Jimmy. Uh, in a few minutes, Kevin Meany is in Dr. Katz. It's a very good one, so I really do advise you to watch it. Uh, next, though, Robin. even more remarkable is that never before in the history of the world has a large man ever walked across this studio floor.